This is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop, and I have a interesting problem here that I thought it was worth showing off. Um, let me go ahead and play this B string for you. Do you hear that metallic rattle? Let me go ahead and play another string that isn't doing that so that you can kind of compare the two. go back to that B. Do you hear that? Okay, so this is the kind of thing that drives your pair techs nuts. Trying to find buzzes is one of the most miserable things that you can get involved with because it can be anything. It can be, there are thousands and thousands of variables to consider. It could be any part on the guitar. Um, so um, after messing around with all sorts of things on here, recarving the nut slot, um, checking out all the hardware and everything. I finally ended up getting to the bottom of this buzz. Let me show you what I found. So if you look at the way that this headstock is designed and you see where that low E tuner comes awfully close to that A string here, that A string is actually the culprit. It's buzzing against this little string cutoff here and causing that metallic buzz that's happening when you pluck the B string. This is a this is a frequency sensitive um, buzz here that has been created um, basically by poor design. When you design a headstock, if you're building a guitar, you typically want to avoid any kind of little impacts like this, and and you know go well out of your way to to avoid anything that could create a problem like this. But you know this is kind of a lower end guitar from probably the late 70s or early 80s, and so you know they didn't bother spending the time to do that. And um, what's cool about this is that this is such a this is such a, a hair pulling out frustrating buzz to deal with that I can't even show you in this position because it won't buzz in this position I need to get it up into player position but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate why I know that this is the case because what I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna play it open and let you hear the buzz and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this little uh, plastic uh, scrap here in between these two strings so that it prevents those two things from impacting on each other and you'll see that the buzz actually goes away. All right so here we are playing position and I'm gonna go ahead and play that B string for you so that you can see that it's still buzzing. Yep. When I go up here and I touch the B string uh, past the nut it actually still buzzes. That was my first clue because usually if you have a buzz that's being caused by the nut, usually you can kind of affect that buzz if you're touching the string past the past that point. And that works for uh, um, like arch top bridges too. If you touch the string past the bridge, you can sometimes find some weird harmonics. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this piece of uh, plastic scrap and I'm going to shove it right in there. And now I'm going to play that B string for you again. Completely clean. So, yep. Now, the next question is, how do you deal with that buzz? Well, that's going to be a little bit more complex since it's a design problem. Um, you know, I can move stuff around. I could cut that string a little closer. Um, but unfortunately, you know, if somebody cuts it like that and tunes it and just happens to land in that right spot, that buzz is going to come right back and somebody else is going to be pulling their hair out over this. So, um Let's uh, maybe think of some creative solutions here and see if we can't figure out how to stop this from happening. All right, so let's talk about some options here. The problem is that these two strings are touching, and the solution is to make those two strings not touch. And so there are maybe a couple of ways that we could play around with doing this. It's a design flaw, and so unfortunately these are going to be kind of cutting it close no matter what we do, but uh, there might be some options here uh, without modifying the guitar. Now, um, one of those might be to just cheat the tuners over a little bit. Now, usually the holes here are a little bit wider than need be, um, either for the bushings, uh, you know, or if you're using a modern style tuner for the uh, for the bolt that goes through. Now, one way might be to cheat this tuner post just a little bit this way while cheating this tuner post a little bit this way and thus opening up a gap. Um, and that's going to be the solution that I'm going to opt for trying here first. 
Another solution might be uh, to carve the nut a little bit differently. Now the nuts that I carve here, I carve a curve into the uh, nut slot allowing the string to kind of bend towards the tuner. Now if um, I do that for a reason and the reason is is because it's much better for uh, it's much better for cutting down on, on uh, friction going through the tuner. Um, but in this case, um, this is arguably a bigger problem than uh, some tuning issues. So um, one way might be to just simply cut that slot straight here and, um, and maybe allowing this one to angle a little bit, but to try to keep those two, uh, try to keep those separate. So those are uh, two uh, uh, good solutions that I like for this problem. Um, if this problem were a little bit more severe, um, some more severe uh, action might need to be taken. Now, I've seen some really um, hacked solutions for this kind of problem before, like installing string trees on, on an acoustic guitar. I really don't like that solution. It looks horrible, and it creates a host of other problems. Um, but... Um, Maybe some better, cleaner, um, cooler solution might be to uh, uh, to plug these holes, re-drill them, and install the tuners at a slightly different angle that was still able to be covered by the bushing so that you weren't able to see it. That might be a good way to go. Um, you know, and I'm sure that there are some other options that might also work. Um, but uh, those are the ones that uh, those are the ones that I offhand would 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 want to recommend. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and try fudging these tuner posts um, in opposite directions, like I was talking about, and see how that works. All right, so I have just gotten done. Um, widening these holes a little bit in the direction that I needed using these half round files. And so um, basically what ended up happening was that this hole ended up getting widened a little bit this direction and this hole ended up getting widened in this direction. And so what I'm left with are two holes that are a little bit bigger than need be, um, which gives me a little bit of play. So obviously these don't fit tightly anymore. So I'm going to have to put in some filler material in order to get these uh, bushings to grip again. And I'm going to need to do that in, with keeping in mind the fact that at, at the end of the day, what I want is that this one needs to come this way and that this one needs to go this way. And so um, there are a number of different ways that you could do this. Um, but considering the price point of the guitar and the fact that this repair is not going to be visible and the fact that it's going to work just as well as anything else would work, I'm going to go ahead and use super glue as my fill material. So um, what I've got here in this cup is some medium viscosity super glue. Super glue comes in three viscosities. You've got the really, really watery stuff, which generally speaking isn't sold in a lot of stores. Um, you've got the super water, uh, you've got the uh, medium viscosity stuff, which is the uh, stuff that is usually in the tubes that you buy at, uh, at like Kroger or wherever it is that you go shopping. Um, and then you've got like the really thick stuff, which can either be more liquidy or more gel type. Now, if I were doing this uh, and, uh, you know, the only store that I had access to was like Walmart, I might go and pick up one of those little tubes of, uh, of uh, gel super glue and use that um, by kind of injecting that into the area that I needed, uh, that I needed the fill on. So we're going to be putting the fill on the reverse direction um, from the direction that we want the thing to move in. So if that makes sense... Um, we need this uh, to move this way, and so we're going to be filling over here. You see what I mean? So, um, what we're going to be doing is taking, uh, since I don't have the gel stuff here, I have the medium viscosity stuff, I'm going to be taking a toothpick and just dipping it into this uh, into the super glue here, making sure that I don't have a trail of super glue hanging off here, which can stick to the uh, instrument and cause problems. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint that in just over here a little bit. And then I'm going to pull that up and we're going to come over here to the smaller hole and we're going to do the same thing. And what this is going to do is this is going to provide a surface for, the, uh, for that uh, bushing to get some grip on. In between coats, I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a little bit of super glue accelerator, which is a cool thing that you can find at... Uh, most uh, most high-end hardware stores. I'm not sure if it's the kind of thing that Home Depot would have, but like Rockler Hardware certainly has it. And um, you can pick it up at, 
you can pick it up at Woodcraft uh, or a number of uh, cabinet shops like that. You can also find it on eBay or Amazon um, if you're into online shopping. So I'm just going to go ahead and and uh, and I'm going to keep applying layers until I build up a surface that's uh, wide enough for me to uh, put the bushing in. Now, a note of caution on this: whenever you're applying super glue as a as a, a filler material and not as a glue. You don't want to take the part that you're fitting and just drop it into that hole because it's a really great way to glue these in, and these should not be glued in. These should not ever be glued in. These are a thing that is meant to be removable and meant to be removable without any destruction to the instrument. And if you glue them in, it's very difficult to get them out without destroying things. Um, like, yeah, just don't do that. So... Um, I'm just going to go ahead and build these layers up slow, giving a nice opportunity in between try in between uh, trying to fit these in to let it dry first, so that I don't accidentally glue them in. Uh, maybe test it with my finger a little bit and, and see if there's any wet glue, and uh, build those layers up. And then I'm going to reinstall the tuners once I've got a good fit and uh, see if that eliminates the problem. So I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do that entire fill process because it's going to be really boring and take a while. Um, but I will show you the finished uh, the finished product and we'll see if it worked. All right, so we got the uh, bushings moved over. Uh, there is a little bit of a, a visible uh, discrepancy in this line now, uh, as in if each one of these was a point on a line, that line is now a little bit crooked. So this one comes in a little bit, this one goes out a little bit, but that's an aesthetic problem. Functionally, we have a huge gap here now. And that gap means that we don't have those two strings vibrating against each other. And that means that the problem has been eliminated. Um, so, um, again, I'm not sure that I would recommend this solution on a higher-end guitar, like a Martin or something. But for this old Carlos, this is definitely a good solution because this has eliminated the problem and hasn't affected the way that the guitar works at all. Um, uh, in the case of uh, um, you know a higher end guitar having this issue, which typically a higher end guitar is not going to have this issue because that's going to have more design and many more years of uh, of R and D behind it than something like this. Um, but if that were the case, um, an option may be to go in and and actually uh, plug and redrill all of these holes, make it a nice straight line, you know, and and uh, and still eliminate this problem due to this uh, due to this angle here. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, play this guitar for you and show you that the buzz is gone. And uh, yeah. All right. So we got the guitar all set up. Um, we now have a gap in between that uh, E and the A string that should prevent that buzz from coming back. I'm going to go ahead and play that B string for you so you can hear what it sounds like now. So even when I adjust the pitch, the buzz is still gone. Um, this has eliminated the problem. It's been a good fix. Um, weird problem. A little bit of a weird fix, but hey, it worked. Um, so we now have a guitar that plays great and doesn't buzz. So i um, just going to talk real briefly about buzzes a little bit more. Like as I said in the beginning of the video, um, buzzes can be caused by a ton of different things. There are a lot of parts on a guitar that could be loose, that could be rattling around, um, things that are supposed to be moving that are loose, things that are not supposed to be moving that are moving. Um, it can be almost anything on the instrument. Um, when I get you know, the I have a buzz guitar into the shop, I know that that's going to be the one that makes me want to pull my hair out. I know that that's going to be the one that I'm frustrated at, and that's the one that's always going to take longer than uh, anticipated. Um, if you are trying to find a buzz on a guitar, I'd recommend sitting with it. I'd recommend, you know, scheduling a time that you're going to maybe need an hour or two, maybe more, um, to find that buzz. Um, it's good to have a friend help you if you uh, have somebody who's willing to, you know, pluck that string while you can put your ear around the instrument and try to find where that buzz is loudest. That may be a good indicator as to, you know, where it's coming from. Not always, though. Things can be sympathetic. Like, you know, in this case, this was a sympathetic buzz. So we had a B string. Um, nothing connected with the B string had anything to do with that buzz. It was just the buzz liked that frequency. And when that B string was plucked, it caused a sympathetic vibration which caused that buzz and that's 
that's just the way that things work sometimes. It's going to be in a place where you don't expect it to be. It's going to be caused by some sympathetic vibration. Um, a good way to locate buzzes would be to have the friend sit down, pluck the thing, you know, where it's buzzing, produce the sound, and maybe take a toothpick and try to put that toothpick down on parts of the guitar systematically. So, like, start at the headstock and, you know, touch the tuners with it and see what part, uh, when touched, stops the buzzing. That's another good way to go about it. Um, but it's really, really hard to find buzzes. It really, really is. Um, and, um, you know, when these things come into the shop, it's it's just one of the most irritating jobs to do really is to locate is to locate something like that um this was one example of of, of a type of buzz that i've seen a number of times um there are other buzzes that i've seen a number of times um you know things like uh rattling screws on on strat bridges is a really common one that i see a lot um I may do a video on that one at some point because it's it's really common and it's really frustrating. Um, you know, there are some other things like badly crowned uh, saddles and uh, you know poorly slotted br uh, nuts that can produce buzzes. In general, you know, again, these things can come from anywhere. So I can't give you a you know one video answer to how to find buzzes on a guitar. This is a cool one though, and so I thought I'd, I thought I'd put this video together for you. Um, this has been Drew, Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. Um, I have a lot more videos on my channel, so if you, uh, if you wanna see those, um, you can visit my website. There's a link to that in the description of the video, or you can just check out my channel. Um, I try to upload stuff that people find, that you know, hopefully people find helpful. Um, and uh, you know, I'll try to keep this uh, feed filled with more good content. Anyway, um, thanks for watching.